Hi everybody, my name is Bree and welcome back to my channel, Bree Zarts. All right, everybody. Oh my goodness. I am so pumped about today's video because I am collaborating with the amazing, talented, fantastic, absolutely lovely Sandra from the Schwoen's Nest. She's my fellow Canadian sister, and we are going to be doing some farmhouse thrift flips. Now, most of you who have been with me a really long time, you know that I'm not really a farmhouse type girl. There are things that I really do like about farmhouse, but I am more like beach, high-end decor, neutral vibe, stuff like that. But when Sandra asked me to collaborate, oh my goodness, I could not say no. So I can't wait to show you what I have created. And with that said, you guys, let's get into that first project. And here we go with farmhouse flip number one. So I found this amazing decor piece um, at a Value Village, a Double V Boutique, or a Value Village, whatever you want to call it. And I'm just taking off this sticker here. It's so cute. It's like a little cake display thing. Oh, it's adorable. So just using an alcohol wipe, just cleaning it up, making sure that I'm getting all the grit and the dirt and the, the nasty stuff off of this um, beautiful piece. And I'm just wiping like the whole thing down. It was pretty nasty. <laughs> and I'm just going to take my white chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and I'm going to paint this whole thing up. Now I did three coats. Um, I was concerned a little bit that maybe the, the varnish would bleed through. I had luck. It did not. If you are concerned about that though, you can absolutely uh, put a sealant on prior to painting and that will prevent any kind of bleeding from any varnish that you find on your pieces. So there we go. It's all done. All white, all beautiful. So now I am just going to take this stencil that I cut out on my Cricut. It says, eat fresh, buy local. I thought it was perfect for this. I got it right out of Cricut Design Space. And I'm just applying it to kind of like the little tray portion of this serving piece of decor. I don't even know what to call it. I just think it's so cute. Tell me, does anybody know what this kind of piece is called? Um, I think it's so lovely. And so I just taped off the sides of my stencil and I'm using my Nantucket blue and a chippy brush and just going over this very, very rough. Like I want this to look old. I want it to look distressed. Um, and like the paint is actually like coming off. So I'm just going over it. Like I said, very, very lightly. And there we go. And you guys know Nantucket Blue is my absolute favorite color. So I was so excited to start using it again. And just pulling off the stencil, weeding out all the bits and pieces. And I think that it came out amazingly. I do use the um, Oracle stencil vinyl. I get it on Amazon. I will try to remember to put a link down in my description box. Um, it's really, really high quality stencil vinyl. And now I'm just going to, because I thought it was a little bit too blue looking and I wanted things to be cohesive. So I'm just using my chippy brush and some white chalk paint and just, you know, dry brushing over top of those letters just to distress them down just a titch. <laughs> and there we go. So now, of course, farmhouse, we are going to distress this even more. So just using my sanding block that I got at the Dollar Tree, I'm just going around the edges, taking off some of that white chalk paint and also going in kind of like the center of things as well to get rid of some of that paint. So it all looks, you know, like it's old and worn and all distressed. That's the charm of this piece for sure. And I think it's one of the charms of farmhouse too, is to have things, you know, kind of look chipped and worn and, you know, just rustic and fantastic. 
<laughs> there we go, sand, 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 and sand, 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 sand. And then of course, wiping that off with a paper towel to get rid of all the dust. Now check out these gorgeous rub-ons that I found at the Dollar Tree. I love Dollar Tree's rub-ons. They are absolutely amazing, such high quality, absolutely gorgeous. And I'm just using my measuring mat to cut this um, rub-on sheet into one inch strips. So using my rotary blade and my square from the Dollar Tree, I'm just cutting this down. Just like that. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take those rub-ons and we're just going to go around the bottom of this cloche, I guess it would be, um, or dome, whatever you want to call it, cake dome, um, with those rub-ons. So going along, and these rub-ons worked amazing on this glass. They stuck perfectly. Um, I didn't have to really struggle with them too much. And you know, with this piece as well, if the whole thing didn't stick down, I wasn't mad about it because again, it's supposed to look distressed. So um, if you know it doesn't go down, then that's totally fine. But look at that, isn't that so cute? Oh, I love it. And we're gonna go all the way around with our little strips there. And there we go. Look at how gorgeous. It almost looks like it's etched on there. Um, and then I'm just using a baby wipe. And because I didn't want it to look like super straight and like it was cut, so I just got rid of some of the little leaves that were kind of cut in half along the top. So it looked more like, you know, a natural pattern instead of it being strips of cut rub on if that makes any sense at all so just going around and you know it, they adhered very well um obviously i would not wash this really roughly you know if you get something on it um but you know they they stayed on really really well and came off really well too <laughs> just like that and you guys legit that is it for the DIY what a transformation I think that this is so cute it is sitting on my kitchen countertop as we speak I love it All right, everybody, I really hope that you're enjoying today's video. And I just wanted to pop in here just to say that if you like home decor on a budget, stuff that looks super high end, but you made it yourself and you got the stuff at the sh the dollar store, then you have come to the right place. So make sure that you tap that like button, make sure you subscribe, and make sure that your notification bell is set to all so that you don't miss any of my uploads. And of course, just like every other video, you guys, I absolutely have to give my shout out to all of my breezers out there, all of my old subscribers, my new subscribers, and everybody in between. You guys know how much I love you, and I totally, 100%, absolutely would not be here if it was not for you. And you guys, if you tap like, if you subscribe, if you share my videos with your friends, that really helps me out. So thank you so much for being here and for hanging out with me. Mwah! I love you so much. And with all of that being said, let's get back into those DIYs. And jumping right into farmhouse flip number two. So this kind of little, I don't know, it's a wall decor piece, um, you know, for mail and stuff like that. And it had a dowel that was busted off and it had another dowel that was still there and there was a screw in it on the side. And like this thing was busted up, but we are going to fix it up and it is so gorgeous. So the first thing I'm going to do just 
I'm removing um, two of these pieces of wood that kind of go across. Again, these are like the mail holders, so you'd put your mail or your bills or whatever um, into them to keep them organized, kind of like a mail organizer. And I'm trying to pry this up. You guys, this took me a while to actually get these off. Um, I tried to use a hammer, it didn't work. I'm trying with my um, staple remover and then of course, I busted the piece of wood and whatnot, but don't worry, we we fix it up. It's not a big deal. But I'm just trying to get these nails out. And the nails were like a solid inch long. So this took a little bit of elbow grease, but it's totally worth it in the end. So, you know, just taking pliers, getting rid of those nails. Like, look at those nails, they're humongous. So um, the one dowel was stuck into the piece with some glue, so I just heated it up with my heat gun and it came out no problem. And then I am just unscrewing this random screw that's at the top of this piece here. I'm just taking that out. And you can see there when I took um, one of those pieces off, I did bust a little bit of the wood there, so I have a clamp that's holding it together because I put some wood glue and it fixed up perfectly absolutely perfectly and so here I'm just using some spackling and I am just going to fill those holes now um, the ones at the bottom there I really didn't have to do and you will see why <laughs> in a little bit here but this spackle is really really good I actually got it at Dollarama and we're just gonna let that dry and then sand that down with our sanding block and now, of course, we are going to paint this up with our Shablam <laughs> white chalk paint by Folk Art. And I painted the whole thing, and I did give this three coats. And of course, you know, again with the sanding block, just distressing this down just a little bit to make it look, you guessed it, worn, rustic, and farmhouse. <laughs> <laughs> sand 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 and make sure you get all of those ridges right but it doesn't have to be perfect at all and then again with these rub-ons so what I'm doing here is I just cut down a piece that will fit into that um, that compartment there on the side and then I just used you know a, a well, at first I used my Cricut scraper and then I did grab like a, a, a piece of wood here, you'll see, because it didn't really stick down very well with the Cricut scraper. It just wasn't, um, I don't know, like hard enough to get that down. But then when I went over it with this piece of wood, it worked out perfectly. And there we go. And again, you know, if you don't get the entire rub on down, if you can't get all of the pieces, that's okay because it's supposed to look like it's, you know, all distressed and, and it gives it a whole bunch of dimension and character, of course. And because here you can see, I am actually taking my sanding block and we're going to rough it up even more. Now, if you want to, to seal those, um, those uh, rub-ons in, you can absolutely throw a, a layer of Mod Podge over top and that will protect them. And so here I'm just using these painter sticks that I got at Dollarama. They were about the same size as the original sticks that I totally destroyed when I was taking this piece apart. And now we are going to shablooey. <laughs> Paint those up as well with my white chalk paint and I did distress them down too. So here I'm just gonna grab a few finishing nails because there were nails in the other two pieces that remained on the, the wood there. So I just wanted everything to be kind of still cohesive. But you will notice here, so I put a nail in all four corners and then this last nail, I split the wood. 
Um, so that was annoying, but no big deal, you know, totally fixed it up with my chalk paint. So when I went over, I just made sure that the crack was kind of filled and really whatever it's supposed to look, you know, all busted up anyways. So, um, it just added to the character of the piece, I think. And then I went over the nails as well, just so that everything was all matchy matchy. And these two knobs I actually got um, in a huge bundle um, on Facebook Marketplace. So if you're ever, you know, checking out or, or if you need some stuff for your stash or whatever, check out Facebook Marketplace, you guys. There's tons of stuff. It's like a great big garage sale. Like, is there really anything better than that? And you can find pretty much anything for smoking deals on there for sure. And so I just drilled a couple of holes um, exactly where the other holes were. So that's why I didn't really have to fill them. And you guys know how it is in my craft room. Things just kind of develop. So I didn't waste my time, but you know, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> so just screwing those pieces of hardware in. And then I am drilling another hole at the top. It is not in the same spot as what the screw was in previously, but just screwing in a white hook um, that I had in my stash there. And what we're going to do is take some of these thistle. Um, these are from the Dollar Tree. I think they're so pretty. And they are farmhouse, it says right on the tag. And I'm just cutting that down and we're gonna hang these upside down so they look like they're drying. And what I decided to do, um, these come in a whole bunch of different colors so i used a few in some spring projects um, a couple of videos back and they were pink and so they also have the blue and the white so i just wanted to mix it up just a little bit and use both of those colors and then taking a piece of twine we're just going to wrap that around the edge or the end of the thistle here and you could use any kind of flowers here you guys you can use roses you can use real dried flowers or you could use the rack to actually dry flowers on like i just think it is so freaking adorable and just making a loop at the very top with this rope and putting that around the hook i did have to fiddle a little bit with the length just to make sure that it hung perfectly there and then cutting off the excess and hooking it over top of that hook at the top and then final touch you guys just making a very simple bow with the same twine hot gluing it on and that is it for this project i think it is so freaking cute Right, you guys i just wanted to pop in here really quickly just to talk a little bit about the collab that i am doing with sandra from the schwoen's nest so sandra and i are doing the farmhouse junk to slam dunk diy decor collab and legit you guys if you have never checked sandra's channel out at the schwoen's nest absolutely head over there right away she is so talented and she also has an etsy shop where she sells a whole bunch of wood projects that you can create yourself so i will have the link for her video her channel and her etsy shop down in my description box I want to send a huge thank you to Sandra for reaching out to me and asking me to do this collab. Thank you so much, girly, and make sure that you go and check out her video. Check out her channel. She's my fellow Canadian sister, and I'm telling you, you will not be sorry. She is crazy talented, and she's such a sweetheart. Now, with all of that being said, you guys, let's get back into those projects. All right, and this is the last one, you guys, farmhouse flip number three. And so this cheese grater, 
this guy that I know, um, I was having troubles finding a metal cheese grater at a thrift shop. So he said that his mom had one and he totally like lifted it from her house. Now I did buy her a brand new one, but he just kind of, you know, mission impossible and <laughs> went to her house and did a quick switcheroo. Um, but I am making this project for her. So Betty, I really hope that you like this project um, and you can blame your son for stealing your cheese grater. <laughs> so I just grabbed some Pumpkin by Waverly and Java by Folk Art. And I mixed the two together and I'm just using a sponge here and just kind of dabbing this color onto the cheese grater because I wanted to make it look old and rusty. Now you can see here I'm being kind of cautious, um, but then I just went ham. I went ham with the paint and I just put it all over three sides of this cheese grater. Just dab, 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 dab all over it. And I think that this co uh, color combination is the perfect color to make something like this look rusty and the paint because it is so matte it looks amazing like look at that tell me that that does not look like an old rusty grater i love it it turned out so great and so this piece of i want to say this this press board or i'm not 100 percent sure what material this is but it's nine inches by six inches so you can use any wood you want um, and what I'm doing here, I am going to use some of the Antique Wax by Waverly and my chippy brush and just throw this onto that piece of wood. So when you use the chippy brush, it gives the Antique Wax kind of like a, a wood effect. Um, it looks like wood grain from the brush strokes. So I love this technique. I think it looks really, really close to real wood. And of course, I put the Antique Wax on the sides as well. And then I'm just grabbing my power drill, lining up this cheese grater because we are going to screw it right onto that piece of wood. So I just use the holes in the back and you can see there that the handle of the cheese grater is hanging over the end. And there is definitely a reason for that, which you will see in the reveal. So just using my power drill and screwing that into place there. Now it looks off center, it's not. It is centered, it just, it's a weird angle. And now I'm just gonna grab a couple of eye hooks and we are going to use my measuring mat here, uh, measure an inch from each side, and then we are going to screw these eye hooks into place on the top. So you can see that the cheese grater is upside down there is a method to my madness you guys i promise so now i'm just grabbing a little bit of twine and going to thread the that twine through those eye hooks there so i'm just going to tie it together i wanted to be, have some length to it for sure um from like so it hangs a little bit lower from any hook that you put it on on the wall. And then you can see here I'm using some more of that thistle, some of this, it's farmhouse witch hazel. Um, those are both from Dollar Tree, uh, some lambs here, and then the flocking balls from Dollar Tree as well. And I'm just gonna cut those down to size. Now, truth be told, I have seen these on Pinterest. I Googled or I, I searched up um, cheese grater DIYs and I've seen this in a whole bunch of different um, pins on Pinterest um, you can put flowers in here you can put utensils in the top if you put something like like a piece of wood let's say inside the cheese grater to stop it from from uh, falling through like it's so pretty I just absolutely love how this came out however I changed my mind here. I thought that the dark wood, it didn't let the grater, you know, stand out. I really wanted it to pop. So I just grabbed my chippy brush and some white chalk paint and just distressed it. And I think that that touch definitely makes the cheese grater stand out against the wood. 
let me know what you think like would you have left it would you have done the same thing with the white chalk paint um once this is a chat like look at that it just definitely pops out a lot more for sure and it was really easy to fix like i just unscrewed it painted it and screwed it back on put the flowers back in and that is it for this diy you guys like it is so cute look at that All right, you guys, that is it for these farmhouse flips. I had so much fun with these projects. Like I said, I'm not really a farmhouse girl, but I really do think that these came out beautifully. This one is definitely my favorite. I just, oh, it's so pretty and it's sitting on my counter right now. As always, you guys, let me know down in the comments which one of these projects was your favorite. And of course, I would like to send a huge thank you to Sandra at the Schwowen's Nest for doing this collab with me today. Make sure you check out her channel and her video. The links will be down in my description box. And if you like what you see, do me a solid tap that like button, maybe subscribe, tell your friends, you know, all of that jazz. Stay tuned for the gag reel. Bye guys. All right, you guys, I really hope, oh, I kind of, hmm, that was weird. Okay. Let's go. I legit just busted my nail. Look at this. I busted it. It like, and my nails are so nice right now, except for this one, the, my middle one. <laughs> but I just broke it, you guys, I'm broken. <laughs> we still digging the hair. Do we like this little flip? You know, it's uh, from a thrift flips. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> That was attractive. <laughs> oh, she puts it on the internet. <laughs> you know, I will say, I had a little bit of lipstick on my teeth. Do you agree with this statement? If you are out with a friend and you go like say to the bathroom, you're checking yourself out and you have like lipstick on your teeth or you have a booger or something like crap in your eyes and that friend did not tell you about that, I don't think they're a real friend. Do you? I don't think so. I will, I got your back. I will tell you if you've got a booger, if you've got such, some stuff on your face, I, I got you. I got you. And I really hope that my friends got me too, because that is embarrassing. <laughs> so make sure you tell your friends if they got a booger. It's essential. It's essential to friendship. <laughs> okay. That's a wrap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh-huh.